Hey, what's going on? Today we're launching a two-part series on how to select the right Surumi submersible pump for your application. Hopefully, this will help you avoid the most common pitfalls when selecting a submersible pump for your project, saving you from delays, frustration, and lost revenue, keeping you on task and running smoothly. For this series, we're gonna focus only on the contractor line of Sudomi submersible pumps because selecting pumps for engineered installations, such as duplex systems and control panels, is an entirely different process requiring expert guidance from trained professionals. So let's get started with part one. In order to begin selecting the right pump for your project, you need to know what you're pumping. Essentially, there are three basic types of submersible pump applications. Type one, clear water. Although you may not actually be able to see through it, clear water is water that contains little to no solids, such as wastewater, rainwater, and swimming pools. Some examples of clear water applications would be elevator shaft sumps, rainwater catchment tanks, and decorative ponds and pools. Type two is slurry. Essentially, this is any body of water containing small particles like sand, dirt, and very fine gravel. You normally find slurry on construction sites where there's digging and trenching below the water table, or there's cement runoff from saw cutting and washdown. Type three is raw sewage. This is exactly what it sounds like, direct raw sewage from toilets. This can also include bathroom sinks and showers, kitchen sink drains, and washing machine drains. The first step in pump selection is determining which type of application you have. Is the water clear, slurry, or raw sewage? Based on the application, you'll select a submersible pump from one of three basic categories. Category number one is dewatering pumps. These pumps do exactly what it sounds like they do. They remove water. Dewatering pumps are used for clear water applications such as sumps, pools, and catchment tanks. It's normally pretty simple to spot these pumps because they have an intake screen at the bottom to filter out large particles and debris. These pumps tend to have a top discharge and use flow through cooling technology to dissipate heat from the motor. This means that the water they are pumping actually flows up through channels in the pump body to capture heat from the motor and carry it out through the discharge. This is how the motor stays cool. It also means that these types of pumps do not need to be fully submerged in order to function. In fact, the Sudumi LSC 1.4S is a surface level dewatering pump that doesn't need to be submerged at all. Category two is trash pumps. Trash pumps have an interesting name because they don't actually pump trash, at least not the type of trash you think of when you hear the word trash. Trash pumps are submersible pumps designed to handle small debris and particles mixed with water, the type of liquid you would find in a slurry application. The easiest features to spot on a trash pump are the large intake screen and side discharge. The intake screen has larger openings for thicker fluids and large debris to easily pass through and into the volute. The side discharge is directly connected to the volute, providing the shortest distance possible for the slurry to travel, increasing efficiency and reducing wear. What you cannot easily see from the outside is the most important element of the submersible trash pump, the agitator. The agitator is a mixing paddle attached to the motor shaft that spins with the impeller stirring the liquid and mixing the particles with the water, allowing them to easily be pumped out. Because of the agitator, the trash pump is the go-to pump to handle any pumping application you run into, except for raw sewage, which leads us to category number three, sewage pumps. Raw sewage applications require special handling and submersible sewage pumps are up to the task. Raw sewage contains all kinds of unpleasant solids and waste chemicals and pretty much anything you can flush down the toilet. The submersible sewage pump is typically cast iron and very heavy, built to thrive in the nastiest environment you can think of. You can spot the sewage pumps quickly because they normally have feet with no intake screen at all, a larger throughlet to allow solids to pass without clogging, and for the most part, they're pretty plain looking. And for good reason, because they'll be buried in sewage anyway. Now that you know your pump application and have the pump category locked in, let's take a look at the Sudomi pumps you can choose from in these categories. In the dewatering category, we have the LB Series Slimline Pumps, LSC 1.4S Surface Level Residue Pump, 50SQ 2.4S Stainless Steel Pump, F13 Utility Pump, L4000 Bilge Pump, and the 50TM Series Titanium Pumps. In the trash category, we have the HS Series Trash Pumps and the NK2-15SK High Head Pump with Sand Kit. In the sewage category, we have the 50UT series sewage pumps. Now within these categories, we can break the applications down a little further. For example, are you pumping seawater or water with high chemical content? 
Are you leaving the pump submersed or will you be removing it after each use? If you're pumping seawater or chemicals and will be removing the pump shortly after use for flushing and cleaning, then any of the dewatering and trash pumps will suffice. However, if you'll be leaving the pump submersed forever, then you'll want the 50SQ2.4S stainless steel dewatering pump or the 50TM2.4S titanium dewatering pump. Titanium would be the ultimate for permanent seawater applications. The 50TM can also handle solids, whereas the 50SQ cannot. We've done videos on all these pumps and I've put the links in the description, so please check them out. In the second part of this series, we'll review how to determine flow rate and head pressure and how to read the pump curve to select the right pump. For more information on this and other pumps in our Sudomi pump line, visit our website at imperialsalesinc.com. We'll see you on the next one.